Hello and welcome to Video Reveal. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal is having fun with the Adobe Title Designer. Now in a lot of my demos, I try to concentrate on what's the quickest and easiest way to do this in an NLE, in Premiere Pro. Of course, we can all go to After Effects and go crazy and make any kind of animation we want. But the idea is, I'm an editor, I don't have a lot of time, maybe this is a placeholder or maybe this is for final, but I want to try something out right now, right inside Premiere Pro. So we're just using simple titles, but we're adding some effects. Let's go have a look. So I've got several already um, animated here. I'm just going to show you. Th this is an old one, but it's still used all the time, and it's very easy to do. So that's a simple directional blur. Okay, that's one. We're going to break all of these down. Ocean wave. And notice how it's really starting to bend all of the characters correctly. That's important. How about reflections using one title and one effect? Oh, maybe two effects. Yes, two effects. Same idea. An emboss effect that um, is not using an image. It's not using any nested uh, comps at, at all or nested sequences. Same there. And then the last one, this is pretty elaborate. That's using one effect and one title. So let's go from the first one. I'll select that and you'll see in my effects directional blur. Any of these can be uh, picked up down in the effects. So if you type in D-I-R-E, there we go, directional blur. And I've got this set with two keyframes. So the first keyframe when we go to uh, this point is 237 and I just eyeballed that. And then the second keyframe, we'll jump to that, is zero. So it interpolates between those two and gives me that blurred effect. Very typical, very good effect just to come on screen. That's one. Next up, how do we achieve these ocean waves? I'll select my title and we'll see wave warp. And wave warp by default does not look anything like this. So instead of having to remember all of this, right click on wave warp and save it as a preset. And I'll call this wavy type. And down in my uh, effects, if I type in wavy, I now have a new preset in there. So this is directional, uh, this is wave warp. And the big one here is that I have large numbers down here in the wave width. And as you change that number and make it smaller, then you end up with something that looks pretty darn awful and pretty darn uh, amateurish. So if you just increase that wave width up a lot, now you've got something that looks like the ocean or a flag. Um, and then you can also set the overall wave height. So if you want the height very, very tiny, you could do this very subtle if you wanted. And I'm using um, a nice sine wave in here. If you use some of these other ones, then you'll get different results. Okay, so that's that wave warp. Next up, I thought this one was pretty cool. Reflections. You can see how the type comes down and uh, is reflected. And I think the cool thing here is the reflection is not the same opacity as the type, which would be a very typical type of effect. So how do we do this? Well, there's two effects. The first one is mirror. And when you apply mirror, it, it's basically mirroring from any angle. So you could have this mirroring and moving up and flying around anywhere. Um, I actually have this going from the top to the bottom. And you can see, I like the effect here because you, you have to guess at what it says as it starts to bring this in. And only when it hits the bottom do you see it. Um, how did I get the bottom reflect or the bottom uh, with a different transparency? Well, I'm using something called compound arithmetic and when I turn that on the compound arithmetic is using a copy of itself blend with original this is the magic one right here you can set that value very low and have that blend in the cool thing about this is all of these effects in one title double click even with the reflection select all of this and now I'll type vacations 
and you see all of the reflections all change evenly. The other thing to notice here in the mirror is uh, you might need to change that location. So you can put it up higher or lower. You can move the whole thing up and down to match the uh, horizon. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, two effects, one type layer, and if you're doing this um, without knowing how to do this, you might have actually taken two type layers and inverted that. That means you change the type. You have to change it in two locations every single time. Just one. All right, next up, let's look at this title emboss effect. And what I have here is two things. I've got bevel alpha and compound arithmetic. If I turn off the bevel alpha, you can see it turns off that um, the bevel and the um, type is in here. It's actually using the, the video one layer, which is my video layer here, as the source. And the only reason you see it is because of the bevel alpha. Same as before, double click this, and I will call this urban life. As long as I can spell. And we'll center this. And you can see it's reflecting in there. It's, it's not perfect, and I actually like this uh, kind of an offset effect in here. And that's what you get with this right here when you're stretching the underlying um, layer. Again, I wanted to concentrate on how to do this within one type layer. I could do this absolutely perfect by floating this on another layer and beveling and bothering a whole bunch of crap. One layer, two effects, okay? And the same thing over here with um, this example using the same... Uh, compound arithmetic and bevel alpha. Now the last one, which is pretty sophisticated, ooh, look at this building up from nothing. It's actually pretty simple. When you select it, I'm using the median value. And I'm uh, just changing that value over time. Now I've rendered this, you can see that before I change them, they were all green uh, to be able to play back fast. The rest of them do actually play back fast enough. This is the only one that is a little bit of a dog. But the cool thing about that median effect, and you can see I just changed the value of the median uh, from 255 to zero. And as you start to drag that up, you're basically, you're telling the title to be created with fewer pixels and you're almost like super averaging them so they don't have all of the refinements in them and they end up turning into nothing and they disappear. All right, so of course we could have done all of this uh, in After Effects with multiple layers and effects and achieved uh, the same results and maybe even better. That's not the point. The point is I'm an editor and I gotta get this done. Don't throw away the titles inside uh, uh, Premiere Pro. Grab some effects, slather them on, and get some cool looking fun titles. All right, hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please click on the subscribe button to video reveal. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, there's a special link in the description for you to get your free 30-day trial. Till next time, having fun with me, I'm having fun with you. I'm Colin Smith.